Hi everyone! In the previous videos, we've explored how to create dynamic sky environments using Terrigen's Easy Cloud presets. By establishing the cloud cover first, we know which areas of the terrain will be visible in the shot and where to apply the forest populations. Our goal is to create the feel of a Pacific Northwest forest, and we'll do that by choosing 3D objects of trees and shrubs native to that area, and then use Terrigen's population feature to generate millions of copies or instances of these objects across the terrain. In this video, we'll provide a step-by-step -step overview of the population process, and in the following videos, we'll address the specific challenges faced in creating forest populations for the shot. Our forest begins to take shape by adding an evergreen tree object to our project. Click on the Object button on the toolbar to bring up the object node list. Then, click on the Add Object button, select Population, and choose the file format for the type of 3D object to be loaded. Navigate to the location of your 3D object file and select it. Once loaded, you'll see two new nodes listed alphabetically in the Object Node list. The first node represents the population and the second node represents the 3D object geometry that all the instances are based on. We need to tell Terrigen where to place the population and how large an area the trees will cover. And because we'll be adding many populations to this shot, the best approach is to use one standard set of values to define these parameters. Let's reuse the same values that defined the height field we originally created in part six of this tutorial series. Then we can mask out any areas of the terrain that we don't want the trees on using one of the many masking techniques available in Terrigen. On the Population's Distribution tab, set the z-axis value of the area center parameter to negative 16,000 meters. This will position the population in the exact center of our height field. Then, set both the area length A and area length B values to 58,000 meters, which will match the exact size of height field terrain. When working with populations, it's good practice to work with as few instances as possible until you've determined all the populator settings. The object spacing AB parameter establishes the distance between the instances. Higher values means the instances are spaced further apart from each other, so fewer instances will be created. And lower values means there is less space between the instances, so more instances will be created. Since we're dealing with such a large terrain, Let's temporarily set the object spacing AB value to 100 in both value boxes, and then populate the terrain by clicking the Populate Now button. As you can see, many little boxes have been created across the terrain. These are the instances of the tree object. When working with many populations, it's sometimes helpful to enable the object's preview color by clicking on the Preview Color checkbox. Now, each object will take on the color value from the color swatch to the right of the checkbox. The tree objects are displayed according to the current settings of the object display mode. At the top of the 3D preview, click on the object display mode button and select show as textured. Some of the trees are still displayed in bounding box mode because the camera is so far away from them. Notice that in the foreground terrain, which is closer to the camera, you can just make out the shapes of the trees. Enable the Ray Trace Preview Mode by clicking on the RTP button at the top of the 3D preview in order to see all of the individual trees. If you need to see the textures of the objects, make sure to enable the button at the top of the 3D preview to enable or disable shaders in the 3D preview. The populator places instances using a grid-like pattern and applies a random offset to the position of each instance to make them appear more natural. The spacing variation in A and B parameters controls the randomness of the positions. At the default value of 1, the position of each instance is fully random within its grid cell, and the population as a whole looks fairly natural, but we can use higher values to create a more random look. If a value of 0 is used, there is no random aspect to the placement of the instances, and they are evenly distributed in a perfect grid pattern. Each instance can also be randomly scaled by adjusting the minimum scale and maximum scale values under the Scale tab. This means that the size of every tree will deviate slightly from the original size of the 3D object geometry and will provide our forest with trees of various sizes. Each instance can also have the direction they're facing adjusted by changing the values in the minimum Y rotation and maximum Y rotation parameters under the Rotation tab. 
The default settings of these parameters are perfect for our forest and means that each tree has already been rotated between 0 and 360 degrees. Each population in Terrigen is based on the geometry of one 3D object. And so far, we've created a sense of variation by randomizing each instance's position, scale, and rotation values. Terrigen also has the ability to vary the color of each instance by assigning a shader to the Tint Diffuse Color parameter under the Color tab. Let's assign a new Power Fractal Shader by clicking on the green plus button to the right of the input field and select Create New Shader, then Color Shader, then Power Fractal Shader. Open the Power Fractal Shader by clicking once again on the green plus button and selecting Go to Power Fractal Shader. We want to take into consideration the area of the terrain that the population covers and the size of the objects when choosing the type of fractal noise pattern to use and setting its scale and color values. Set the Feature Scale value to 1 and the Lead-In Scale value to 450. Then, under the Tweak Noise tab, set Noise Flavor to Perlin Ridges. Under the Color tab, enable the Apply Low Color parameter by clicking on its checkbox and setting its value to 0.8. Finally, set the Color Contrast value to 1. This will give us a fractal pattern that provides enough detailed variation over the extent of the terrain and will allow the diffuse color value of each instance of the object to vary slightly, as its diffuse color values are multiplied by the fractal pattern's color values. Tinting the population with the fractal we just created will darken the instances by varying amounts, but this feature can also be used to change their color, as we can see in this rendered image. We'll explore this feature in more depth in the upcoming videos in this tutorial series, and to learn even more about the techniques for tinting populations, please see the tutorial links in the description below. We can limit where the instances will occur by assigning a shader or group of shaders as a mask to the population. The Use Density Shader field under the Distribution tab is used for this purpose. And this feature can also be reversed by clicking on the Invert Density Shader checkbox. This means the mask can either define the area to be filled or the area to be left unfilled by the instantiated objects. Let's limit these trees to the mountaintops by assigning a distribution shader as a mask. The distribution shader allows us to set constraints based on the altitude and slope of the terrain. To determine the elevation of the mountaintops, hover the mouse cursor over the terrain in the 3D preview while watching the coordinates displayed along the bottom of the 3D preview. The Y coordinates indicate that the mountaintops are approximately 2 kilometers in elevation. Now click on the green plus button to the right of the Use Density Shader field and select Create New Shader, then Color Shader, then Distribution Shader. Click the green plus button again and select Go to Distribution Shader to open up the shader's parameters. Then click on the Altitude Constraints tab. Enable the Limit Minimum Altitude by clicking on the checkbox and set the minimum altitude value to around 1,900 meters. Set the Minimum Altitude Fuzzy Zone value to 0. The Fuzzy Zone value is used to create soft transitions, allowing the number of instances of a population to slowly increase or decrease over the specified distance. But for this example, we want to see a very distinct delineation of where the population begins and ends. Then, click on the Populate Now button to recalculate the population. Now, all the trees are limited to the mountaintops above the altitude of 2,000 meters. Click the Invert Density Shader checkbox and the Populate Now button again to see the reverse. Now, the tree population fills the terrain beneath the altitude of 2,000 meters. To learn more about the techniques for creating and using shaders for masking, please see the links to the tutorials in the description below. Once you're happy with the look of the population, the final step in the workflow is to save the population's instances into a cache file. By storing this data in a cache file, the population won't need to be recalculated each time the project is loaded or sent to the render farm, which can be a huge time saver, especially when dealing with millions or even billions of instances. To save the cache file, click on the Cache Settings button at the bottom of the Population Layout pane. Then, click on the Save Cache button and navigate to the location you wish to save the file at and give it a name. If you need to change the population after you save the cache file, you'll need to recalculate the population.
and then resave the cache file. In this video, we presented an overview of the basic steps for working with populations. In our next video, we'll look at how we identified the important sections of the terrain in our shot and set up masks for these areas so that we can populate the landscape with our Pacific Northwest forest. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.